views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Patasek. Marge was searching for the purpose of her life and the truth that would tie everything together to make sense of what was taught and what was happening on our planet, the fire that was creating all the smoke. Through many experiences, she was finally led to the knowledge book that provided all the answers. Marge is now talking about this gift to humanity on Knowledge Book Radio, so all can be united in peace, love, and harmony. This live call-in show at 1-800-930-2819 is amazing. So get ready to hear about the Knowledge Book. Here's your host, Marge Potasek. Hello, everyone. I'm March Batazic, and you are listening to the Knowledge Book Radio with March Batazic on Transformation Talk Radio. So, for the next hour, we will continue covering topics from the Knowledge Book or having some kind of connection with the Knowledge Book, uh, as we've been doing you know, for the past two years now. Okay. So, um, before we go any further, let me tell you and remind you that the United States website is www.usaknowledgebook, all one word, dot net. Again, www.usa.thenowledgebook.net. The Turkish World Brotherhood Union website is www.dkb-mivlana.org.tr. Again, www.dkb, David Kite Boy, dash mevlana.org.tr. My personal information, my personal cell phone number is 973-787-7035. And my email address is mmjp99 at gmail.com. That is Mary Mary John Peter 99 at gmail.com. And of course, if you're interested in any information about Call to Friendship, there is a Call to Friendship website. That's www.calltofriendship.org. And there is also, that's all one word, and there is also um, information about the Congress that's coming up in June, at the end of June, and that's worldunification.calltofriendship.org. Okay, so again, please do email or text me with any questions that arise from today's topics or from any topics from previous shows. Or if we had submitted a question or had a question and didn't quite cover it, or you still have questions about it, please do contact me. We'll be happy, or I'll be happy to cover that on the phone, okay, or an email, or however it is you want to do this. Okay, so today's topic is laws. What are they and why are they? Um, that's one of the biggest things that, that basically shuts people down. Why all these regulations? Why all these rules? Why does it have to be done this way? Why does it have to be done that way? Well, when you look at laws, when you look at rules, why are they here? Um, Basically, if you look at any laws out there, they're there to protect us from ourselves. Now, what is the definition of law and how does that impact anything that we're talking about today? So the law is a system of rules which a particular country or community recognizes as regulating the actions of its members and which it may enforce by the imposition of penalties. So... One of the examples of, so basically it's a synonym is rule, regulation, system of laws, body of laws, constitution, legislation, code, legal code, charter, jurisprudence, law of the land. Another definition of law is a rule defining correct procedure or behavior in a sport. So you have, you know, different laws apply, different regulations apply in hockey, different regulations apply 
in football or in uh, tennis or any other sport or playing cards for that matter. Now, when it comes to the United States, there are two basic levels of the legal system in the United States. There's the federal law and there's the state law. The federal law, of course, applies to the entire nation as a whole, to all the 50 states, but state laws are only in effect in a particular state. Now, if there is a difference between the laws between the state level and the federal level, if the state laws allow people to do more things and have give them more rights than um, federal law, then um, the state law actually is supposed to supersede the federal law, okay? Um, now, again, there is a different kind of classification of law in the United States. The first one is the civil law, and the second one is the criminal law. Now, civil law includes two types of laws. The first one is the administrative codes. Those are the things that administer and regulate all areas of world concern, such as licensing, insurance law, health codes, and the classification and administration of public officers, including police officers and the officers of the peace. It also covers judge, judges and politicians, um, and where also transportation laws and even if there is a state that is not landlocked, meaning it's on the coast, it also covers admiralty law. Now, there is another area that's called tort law, and this is basically under the civil law, and it has to do with damage or complaints of one party against another, but this is that does not contain any kind of a criminal action, no kind of transgression of the criminal law. So it's just towards and having to do with disagreements or some kind of retribution or um, adjudication between individuals. Now, they also have laws covering copyright, patent law, and civilian pilot licensing and also the registration of large maritime carriers, as well as aircraft fall under this description of civil law and administrative laws. Then, of course, there's the criminal law, and this is what we usually hear on the radio or see on the TV, that this person, you know, killed the other person, this person robbed the other person, and this is what is covered under criminal law. Crimes are covered here. In many states, this also would cover who is allowed to have um, firearms and guns. It also covers having a license or, or having the license and registration being filed with the state. And this is also covered by criminal law. Now, crimes that fall under criminal law and where those crimes are, let's say, aggressive and forceful against society and other individuals, they're called criminal offenses. And these acts are addressed and adjudicated by whatever law is established in that state. So this would cover rape, murder, accidental killings, um, and punishments for these acts are also described in um, the law, where there is a gradation based on the judge's um, thinking and the judge's adjudication on whether how strong a penalty uh, is to be imposed. And then, of course, in the United States, we have a constitutional law. This is the most important body of law and it basically sets the boundaries and the roles of all the branches of government. And the Constitution and the Bill of Rights is a broad-based foundation on which all the other laws are actually based and upon which, and this is the foundation upon which all the other laws are supposed to um, be formulated. Of course, the Constitution also has the Bill of Rights. And these were amendments that are later after the initial constitution was formulated and it addressed certain areas um, that needed to be addressed that were not addressed in the initial constitution. 
Now, of course, there are other laws. When you look at other laws, when you look at other countries, they have Chinese law, you have civil law, you have common law, you have court law, you have Egyptian law, European law, Germanic law, Greek law, Indian law, Israeli law, Japanese law, Roman law, Scandinavian law, Scottish law, Soviet, Welsh, whatever country there is, they have a particular set of laws that govern that particular country and the citizens in that country. So I haven't gone into great detail as far as finding out what the differences between these laws are, but I'm sure there are differences um, because each country has its own particular set of circumstances. Each country has its particular set of environment and the laws would need to cover that particular country's society and what is or is not allowed in that society. I'm sure that there are laws that are same everywhere, but there will be differences in how things are applied. And I'm sure that people are aware that we need to know what the laws of the local country are when we are traveling to make sure we don't accidentally and unintentionally transgress a law that is present in that country. And um, that country then has the right to impose punishment on us. So we have to be careful when we're traveling to make sure that we know what the country's laws are, what the transgressions, possible transgressions are, so that we're able to protect ourselves and make sure that we stay within the boundaries of the law of that country. Okay, a lot of times, let's say I was coming back from Turkey and some person took out a cell phone and started taking photographs during the um, right by um, the entrance to the customs, meaning the border patrol was there and someone came in immediately and said, sorry, you can put that cell phone away. You're not allowed to take pictures when you're going through passport control. So this is a law that someone did not know that they were supposed to be following. If they had continued taking pictures, I'm sure they would have been whisked off and, you know, more and prosecution would take place. The same thing holds true, let's say, if you go to a different country and you're there at um, state buildings or, or official buildings or museums or whatever. I know I went once to uh, the Metropolitan Opera here, the Lincoln Center, and I like these particular sconces on the wall, so I started taking pictures inside uh, Lincoln Center. And next thing I know my camera was almost confiscated from me because they were not allowed to take pictures inside the Lincoln Center. Now, it's not, you know, a Secret Service kind of a deal. It's not um, any place that... Anyway, bottom line is there are certain situations, there are certain places where laws are applied and where laws are placed that we need to make sure that we know not to um, transgress and not to incur punishment. I was able to convince the woman that I will not be using these pictures anywhere. Um, it will be just for personal use. So she let me go and she um, allowed me to keep my camera. Now, besides civil law and criminal law that is you know, present in every country, we all have, also have something called natural law. Now, natural law in itself is something that's amb ambiguous. It don't doesn't quite have a definite um, definition because it is based on moral theory and as well as based on legal theory. So like natural law is something that is inherent to the fact that a person is a human, that is inherent to the fact as to what exists in nature, what exists in the world, and therefore what is or is not permitted in terms of behavior. Okay, so basically this natural law is something that is intrinsic to the fact that we are humans and the world works the way it works. Okay, now according to the natural law legal theory, the authority of imposing legal standards comes from the moral merit of those standards. So this is based on morality on a code of ethics that can be, um, that are formulated by each individual country. And there are different kinds of natural law, legal law theories, and many different people who have, you know, put in their own particular theories for their own particular way of doing things. So one of these was John Austin. And basically this is, 
he provided a set of necessary and sufficient conditions for the existence of the law that distinguishes law from non-law in every possible world. Now, there is also something called natural law theory that was proposed by Thomas Aquinas, and he focused on the overlap between natural law, moral, and legal theories. Now, there's something, someone called John Finnis, and he developed a classical natural law theory. Now, there was a term that I was not familiar with, and that is it's called positive law, and this is a law that is actually made by humans. This is something that is formulated and produced by humans. It is not part of the law of nature as we were talking about before. So positive law is something different from natural law. Positive law is something that humans have formulated to cover a particular type of activity or action or state. And natural law basically has to do with inherent rights. And these rights are not given by any kind of legislation, but they're given by God or by nature of reason. Okay. Now, of course, we have social laws. Now, this is something that came about in the United States at the end of the 19th century, and basically it merged the difference between public law and private law. Public law has something to do with society in general. Private law has something to do with an individual. But social law has been included and has been poured forth to kind of blend the difference between the two because, well, a person is part of society and they're part of the public as well. So all of this came into being at the end of the 19th century through a progress that started in Germany, went on to France, then to England, and then finally to the United States at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. Then, of course, there is something called folkways. And this is a term that's used in sociology. And these are the norms. These are the guidelines for routine or casual interaction. And this is has ideas about what is appropriate on how to greet people, how to dress, in different situations. So again, this is something right now that we could talk about that this is more or less um, an etiquette. Now there's also local law. Local law is basically being applied to a very particular district within a territory as opposed to general law for the entire um, state. So or government or federal government. Now, it's very interesting that local laws can be very, very different from each other. I had a very unpleasant experience in a sense, and I learned my lesson. Um, when you park a car close to a fire hydrant in New Jersey, you need to be 10 feet away from the fire hydrant. So you automatically assume, or I automatically assume, that if it's 10 feet in New Jersey, of course it's going to be 10 feet in New York State and New York City. Well, I was pleasantly surprised, I'm being sarcastic here, when I was parked 10 feet away from the fire hydrant, and over time you can gauge as to how far away that distance is without taking out a measuring stick. Um, so I parked what I thought was a legal distance from the fire hydrant, only to find myself given um, um, a ticket for parking too close to a fire hydrant. And initially, I think they changed this law recently, now it is 15 feet. So one and a half times the distance that's in New Jersey that's allowed. So you need to be, be 15 feet away from the fire hydrant to be legally parked next to a hydrant in New York City. So again, if you're traveling by car, it's nice to know what, how and where you can get caught in the sense of being able to know what the local regulations are. Same thing, I used to live in a city where you're not allowed to park outside in the street overnight. And if you do have a car parked out outside on the street overnight, this was a local mun municipality, then you get a ticket. I almost got a ticket when I parked my own car in front of the house um, because I had something done on the driveway. So I parked the car and it was very good because the police had actually realized where I was and um, 
somehow got my telephone number, called me up and said, listen, you're not allowed to park in front of the house. I said, well, I didn't know. Well, apparently not all of us are able to read all the fine print as to what is or isn't allowed. But anyway, they said, okay, fine. Now, if you are parking and you have no um, other way of taking care of your car for that night, then if you call the city, then they will put your name on the list and the license plate number of your car, and then you will not get a ticket. So again, depending on where you are, what you're doing and how you're doing it, different laws may apply in different localities, different cities, different uh, cities within a state, different states. So everything is more or less laid out and could or could not be confusing. In most cases, it is confusing as far as parking regulations between New Jersey and New York, and I got caught on that one. But anyway, now, of course, we're talking about laws that were naturally came out of the fact that we are alive as humans and moral code. We talked about civil law. We talked about criminal law. We talked about the Constitution. So these are mostly man-made uh, laws. These are mostly laws that are... Um, imposed by humans on other humans or imposed on society. Now, of course, there's also the laws or what are considered what should or shouldn't be done in a particular situation. And this is etiquette, of course. Now, and this is where I usually fall down on. Um, so this is supposed to be polite behavior, good manners, acceptable behavior, accepted behavior, proper behavior, and all this, it covers, you know, what you are or are not allowed to wear in terms of color before or after Labor Day. Um, so all kinds of rules and regulations. Right now they have new um, etiquettes that have been um, formulated because right now we have texting and everything else. So... Um, is it polite to put your elbows on the table? When do you text? When do you not text? Um, what about emails? Everything is covered in etiquette and what is proper and what is not proper. How to pass the food around the table. Apparently it's done counterclockwise, which means you pass to the right and not to your left. If you're squeezing a lemon, make sure that you're protecting the, the lemon and so, not, so the lemon juice is not squeezed and squirts your next door neighbor and that's sitting next to you. So what not to do in terms of if you don't want to insult someone or get someone angry on the other end of your email, we are not supposed to be using caps because capital letters and basically mean that you're yelling at them at the top of your voice. So covers who opens the door for who, all kinds of rules and regulations that allow us to function in society and not ruffles anyone's feathers. Okay. So we kind of covered more or less the civil law and the laws created by man to regulate and control and safeguard, you know, the society. Now, of course, there are laws of nature, and these laws of nature are basically gravitation, matter, and light. Now, the laws of nature are immutable. They are unchangeable. And these interactions in the universe, and they apply to the entire universe, they are governed by four fundamental forces. Now, this is split into two on the large scale, on the things that are gross, that are bigger than the um, atomic scale. These forces are gravitation and electromagnetism. These are the rules that guide the large um, environment that we're in. Now, when we're talking about the atomic nucleus and the atoms and the quarks and whatever, then on that level, that's called the strong and the weak forces, and they're the ones on the microscopic. On the macroscopic level, it's the gravitation and electromagnetism laws that govern, while on the microscopic level, on the atomic level, it is the strong and weak forces that are dominant. They're the ones that rule. And when you think about gravitation, that's the one that holds everything together in the universe. So an apple will befall to the center of the earth no matter where you are on this planet. And actually the gravitation force 
is the one that allows the moon to be orbiting around the Earth. And that's how all the planets are actually um, revolving around the sun. It's all got to do with gravitational forces and the gravitational laws. Now, this is also a description of how things work, but it's also an opportunity for humans, or was an opportunity and is an opportunity for humans to actually be able to use these laws to figure out what's going on out there. Now, the only thing we've got to look at is light coming in. And based on how that light comes to us, how it's bent, how it's diffracted, um, we're able then to know that there are stars out there, that there are quarks out there, what the stars are composed of, what elements they're composed of. So it basically became a research tool. These laws of nature become research tools for us to explore the universe and how it works. Okay. So we can literally cannot go out there and actually take a piece of star, bring it back and study it. We can only study it through the light that comes from it. And when we're talking about stars, our sun actually the center of the sun is 50, is 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. That is hot. There is no way that we could even get close enough to be able to scoop anything out. Now, the outside, the surface of the sun is 10,000 degrees. So, but that doesn't allow us either. Now, humans, of course, live in a very, very, very narrow temperature raise, um, temperature gradient. Basically, if we go below the freezing of water, which is 32 degrees, we start freezing too. When we go above 100 and 405 degrees as far as our body is concerned, then our brain and all the um, proteins in our body start degrading, start being cooked, literally cooked. So we live in a very, very narrow temperature range and we need to, we will not physically be able to explore these things in terms of anything else. But right now, what's happening is that what they're, the scientists are trying to, or the physicists are trying to um, put together a grand unified theory, meaning combine something, combine the laws of nature. This is what Einstein was working on at the latter part of his life, of unifying all these theories, the, the macroscopic and the microscopic, into one unified theory because this is one unified universe that all works together. So somehow all these um, laws need to interact with each other and depend on each other. There's got to be something that's underpinning it all that allows everything to work the way it does, both on the macro scale and the micro scale. But however, why are laws here? What is going on? Basically, as far as I'm concerned, all the positive laws are in place to be able to protect us from ourselves. We have propensities, we have proclivities, we have ways of doing things that maybe harm someone else and may harm ourselves. Now, why do we have traffic lights? Why do we have traffic laws? Why do we have parking laws? Why do we have any of this? Because, I don't know if you remember, or um, the Keystone Cops, Basically, if we don't have traffic laws, we would have accidents all the time. We would have injuries all the time. We would always be insecure and not know what's going to come at us from what direction in terms of driving. Same thing happens for society. If we don't have a codified law legal system, if we don't have a, a fair justice system, then anarchy rules. Anything goes. So it cannot work that way. Okay. Now, what the knowledge book is trying to do, all these laws are different depending on where you are, whether in Alaska or in the Sahara or wherever you are. The Alaskan laws will be good for those people who are living in Alaska. The people in, living in Sahara will have different conditions. Therefore, different laws would apply. And different laws will be um, imposed and created. So um, what the knowledge book is trying to do is to establish a unification by putting together common laws that will work for everyone. And those laws are applied uniformly and fairly to everyone. So what the knowledge book is trying to do is go from the ego to eliminate the ego very gradually 
and for us to be able to reach back and go back to our essence because our essence of course is that spark of god that is within us and that's and as as we are able to be more and more dealing with essence to essence as opposed to ego to ego then less laws the only law that will be applied will be um, respect for the human is respect for Allah. In other words, anything and everything is to be respected and we treat everything well. And how does the knowledge book do this? It is the objective of the knowledge book of attaining common laws and attaining um, unification where humans treat other humans well. Um, this is done through the accelerated evolution plan that started in 1900. Of course, this evolution plan was based, that was based on the foundation that was done, that was put in place on the previous sacred texts that were in place at the time. So we went from meditation to the Old Testament, to the New Testament, to the Quran, and right now, those who have actually successfully gone through all those steps, have gone through the evolution of those dimensions, and have incorporated into themselves all the energies, frequencies, knowledge that those dimensions um, provided, and therefore they have become those books, those sacred texts, as they are living. In other words, they're not lo no longer external pieces of paper and external guidelines that are not part of that human. They have become internalized with that human. They have become that human, meaning they are not living the religion. They are not studying the religion. The religion is not external to them. They're actually living the religion. They are living the moral code that's implied in that religion. And of course, the other part of that, as far as the accelerated evolution plan, is the energies and frequencies that the knowledge book gives. Now, when we're studying a different language, why do we study different language by studying vocabulary, by studying sentence structure, by studying the, the way the sentence is put together? Basically, you could learn a language through immersion. Go to a different country, stay there, or even listen to different languages on television. Listen to movies, listen to their radio, listen to their um, television. If you listen, after a while, the brain itself will pick up those, let, those words, and you eventually will understand that language. But that process takes seven years. So if you want to shortcut that process, then you learn the vocabulary by memorizing it, you learn the grammar by memorizing it, and therefore you're applying your consciousness to learning the language, and it goes quicker. You're saving yourself time. Okay? So what the knowledge book is doing is basically making the process quicker by giving us energies, frequencies, and knowledge instead of waiting for us to eventually got, get to the point of understanding how things work and figuring it out for ourselves. It gives us knowledge. It gives us the truth. It gives us energies and frequencies to speed up the process. So where previously the knowledge book, we were doing an evolution of one... Oh, no, I forgot. Anyway, bottom line is, right now, at this point, we are doing an evolution plan in every second. Where before, we're doing 10,000 years of evolution in one year. So, or 1,000 years of evolution in one year. And then it went down to one day. And then went down to an hour. And then went down to a minute. And now we're down to a second. And eventually, we'll be down to doing an evolution plan in every second. So if you think things are scurrying by, things are fast and things are going by very, very quickly, this is part of what is happening. We're going through different experiences. We're going through different um, energies to allow us to actually incorporate that knowledge, incorporate those energies, incorporate those frequencies in ourselves to allow us to gradually go up the evolution ladder. Okay, and this is done through reading the knowledge book, writing the knowledge book, and being part of the knowledge book studies. Now, previously, it was okay to be, you know, to sit in a, in a cave, on a mountain, and do your meditation and become enlightened. But as I learned, and right now, it is no longer time to be a recluse, to be someone that's away from society. We need to be part of society. Because it is society that provides those experiences, that provides those situations that basically teach us and train us. Okay, um, when I am sitting on a cushion inside my apartment or inside my house um, and meditating, 
I could think, and I did think, that, oh, I'm this perfect individual. I love everything. I love everybody. Everything is great. Everything is wonderful. I am so evolved. I am so great. And then the minute somebody knocks on the door and we don't want to see them or somebody calls on the phone and they're saying something to us that, that upsets us, out come, you know, the negative language, out comes the anger, out comes everything else. So we do need those people to be, we do need to be in society, to be in connection with people, to be able to, number one, gauge for ourselves. How do we approach people? How do we view people? Do we view it from our ego? Do we view them from our ego or do we view them from our essence? Do we see those individuals in front of us as um, essences of God, as you know, manifestations of God, or do we see them as, oh, he's my enemy, he's trying to get money from me, or he tried to teach cheat me he tried to do this to me or he's not a good person but i'm a good person when we're in that kind of a state of course we're not thinking from our essence and viewing the other individuals from our essence we're viewing them through our ego so at one point you know milarepa um was in isolation was able to accomplish his um evolution in one lifetime we we're doing that right now through the knowledge book, not through meditation, not through anything else. Yes, meditation is is important. Yes, meditation is critical for us to get a certain level. However, once we've gone through that stage, once we've gone through that um, episode in our lives, we go on further to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. And the other thing is, when we're reading the knowledge book, we're actually in a meditative state. We actually are meditating and we get the energies and frequencies from the knowledge book as if we were able to bring in those energies into ourselves. So what will, what will be the common laws of the future? As far as the knowledge book is concerned, it is those laws that are looking like Switzerland. Maybe Switzerland has this one basic premise, constitution that says this is the basis of all the laws that you have. And then you have cantons that basically have their own local laws that apply to their own local situations, but they're based on, they're based on the higher laws and they're based on the constitution of the entire state. Now, eventually, all the laws in our countries and all the countries will be laws based on respect for the human is respect for Allah, is respect for God. Now, um, okay, I would like to go into, initially, everyone has heard, or mostly everyone has heard about Atlantis. Atlantis, Atlantis was a very advanced civilization, and they were able to, at that point, be able to draw in universal energy directly through brain power and use universal energy to accomplish whatever they needed to accomplish. However, over time, they separated themselves from universal energy and started thinking and accepting ideas from dimension knowledge, meaning no longer universe where their infinite awareness is present. We're now down to being able to draw knowledge from specific dimensions. Okay, and the initial law, uh, the initial law that was given, the first constitution that was given um, is presented in the knowledge book. However, maybe now is a good time to take a break and we'll cover the initial constitution, the first constitution when we come back from break. So once again, March Potasic on Transformation Talk Radio with March Potasic on Knowledge Book Radio. My telephone number is 973-787-7035. Email address mmjp99 at gmail.com. Mary Mary John Peter at gmail.com. 99 at gmail.com. Okay, stay tuned. We'll be right back. You said forever. You said always. Now you know things have changed, and going back is not an option. It's sudden devastating and is like taking a leap of faith. Tune in to From Two to You 
Thriving After Divorce Radio, as Sarah Lou's empowerment coach and spiritual mentor, reminds you to have faith in yourself. Tune in every second Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific and listen as Sarah encourages you to leave negative stories in the past and move forward. We all need a friend when I do becomes I can't. Let Sarah help as life takes you in a new direction. Leave the guilt and doubt in the past, step into the spotlight, and show the world who you are. To find out more about Sarah Luz, visit saraluz.com. Dream on, lie high, and live adventurously on The Laura Meeks Show. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Laura Meeks guides you in finding your unique gifts and bringing them to life. As a certified life coach, speaker, and veteran bomber pilot for the U.S. Air Force, Laura knows how to follow a dream. She is ready to support you so you can dream on, fly high, and live adventurously. For more information on Laura and her work, visit flyhighliving.com. Are you ready to embrace your essence and the magic of who you are? Let me, Emily Perkins, hold your hand and walk with you as we go treasure hunting for the gold that lies within you. Tune in to Love Living Radio every second and fourth Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit LovelivingHolistics.com. Calling all moms, it's time to awaken your vibrant, intuitive, loving self in every area of your life. Join host Debbie Pokornik as she shares thoughts, stories, and tools to help you stand in your power. Listen to Vibrant Powerful Moms Helping Everyday Women Create Extraordinary Lives, Mondays at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. For more information about Debbie, visit EmpoweringEnergy.com. That's Empowering with letters N-R-G.com. Are you searching? searching? Looking for a sign? A message you need to hear? From the great unknown? From the most mysterious place that is the most familiar to your soul in the depths of who you are? The universe puts someone here to talk to, someone God gave a blessing to that you may find insight with. TheAngelLady.net. 1-800-323-1790. back to Knowledge Book Radio with March Patazic, and March Patazic, of course, is speaking. My telephone number is 973-787-7035. Email is mmjp99 at gmail.com. Mary, Mary, John, Peter, 99 at gmail.com. Please do send us topics, questions, or maybe things that you've read in the Knowledge Book that maybe is confusing or maybe you don't know quite you know, what it means. Maybe we could cover that as well. So any suggestions are uh, welcome. And of course, the website, the United States website is www.usa.theknowledgebook.net. World Brotherhood Union Turkish website is www.dkbdavidkiteboy-mevlana.org.tr. Okay. So again, this is for more information, and we'll continue with our topic with laws. What are they, and why are they? And when we finished, we got to the point of the original Constitution, the original law of the land, or the original law that was prevalent at the time of Atlantis, or at the start of Atlantis, that was created by the ancestors of the Atlanteans, and this is the original and the first Constitution. Now... There have been many civilizations before our civilization, before we came to be. There are many beings who are on this planet, and basically they did not follow or they separated themselves from the original constitution, and they wound up being destroyed because, and actually Atlantis was also destroyed because there was only 600 people in Atlantis that actually followed the original constitution. They were able to still connect with universal energy and be able to live uh, their lives based on the initial constitution. So there are many 
civilizations that came into being and were eliminated because they could not live according to the Constitution as it is. Now, of course, we are supposed to abide by and keep everything intact. Okay, now. So this is the initial Constitution that we are going to or going back to, and we need to be in a state to be able to actually accomplish this. And that's why the evolution plan is actually here in place and the knowledge book has been here in place and while the previous sacred texts have come to us. Okay, the first one is whoever you are, so is your brother or sister. Second, mothers are the mothers of all the children. Fathers are the fathers of all the children. Third, in one morsel, partiality, even as small as a grain of wheat, cannot be made. Fourth, everything will be equally distributed to everyone. Fifth, one who does not radiate his her love to his her surroundings, who does not let flow his her energy to his her essence, is transferred beyond the curtain of immortality. She, he, is sent to the principle of existence, program of reincarnation and karma. Maybe I should read this again. Number one, whoever you are, so is your brother, sister. Two, mothers are the mothers of all the children. Fathers are the fathers of all the children. Three, in one morsel, partiality, even as small as a grain of wheat, cannot be made. Four, everything will be equally distributed to everyone. Five, one who does not radiate his, her love to his, her surroundings, who does not let flow his, her energy to his, her essence, is transformed beyond the curtain of immortality. She, he is sent to the principle of existence, program of, of reincarnation and karma. And that's what we are in right now. We're in the program of reincarnation and karma. However, reincarnation program basically is being um, eliminated because... The decree of death is trying to be eliminated. So everyone will eventually, should they succeed in getting themselves to the point where they are actually living what this law gives, and that's where we're going back to, that's where all the teachers are here, that's why the knowledge book is here, that's why the previous texts are here, is for us to be able to be at the level, to be able to live within this initial constitution. And should we actually be able to do that, we will be able to live as immortals, to live with, with incombustible bodies and be able to travel in the universe wherever we want. Now, little by little, the initial constitution was deteriorated, the initial, it was degenerated, and we of course wind up with today, of course, we have a completely different idea what family is. Family, we think, is our own biologically connected, you know, little entity, whether it's two people or three people or four people or five people, we think that's family. Actually, that's not family. Everyone is our brother and sister and everyone is our child. So um, when we get to the point that we will accept and abide by this law and this constitution, just like we accept that the fact that the apple is going to drop when we let go of it, just like we're going, we accept the fact that the sun's going to rise in the east and set in the west, just as we understand or not understand, but just as we're able to accept and live within the guidelines of natural law or the laws of nature, like gravity, like electromagnetism, like the strong force, like the weak force, when we accept and live within those paradigms, without questioning, without doubting, and of course it's the way it is because that's the way it is. When we accept the, the initial first constitution in that manner, that of course that's the way it is, then we'll have succeeded, okay? Um, so basically that's the target. This is where we are going. This is where the evolution plan is trying to put us. This is where the knowledge that is coming from the knowledge book. And this, of course, this initial constitution is part of the knowledge that is being given to us. If we look at around us, we will have a completely wrong idea of what family is. We have a completely wrong idea of what fairness is. We have a completely wrong idea of what it is that we're supposed to be accomplishing here. Right now, we're based on ego. We're based on trying to get the best part for ourselves, trying to um, make sure that we survive at the cost or maybe at the 
um, at the cost and, and maybe hurting somebody else. So this is not what we're supposed to be doing now. The last part, when we're reading the knowledge book, when we are doing all the previous studies, um, we need to get to this level where we accept another human as another human just like us as the spark of God. Now, so why are all the guidelines? Why do certain rules apply as far as following the knowledge book studies? Well, my short end of the, the, the short answer is because they work. Now, it works because we need to be in society. We need to meet with people and know what people are like and learn about people. There is nothing better to learning about people by, except by being among people. Now, when the knowledge book, when we read the knowledge book, work with the knowledge book, the knowledge book has the light photon cyclone technique and, and actually handles the energies and frequencies and knowledge to allow us to actually go through and progress our evolution and be able to absorb higher and higher energies without hurting our bodies and be able to absorb higher and higher frequencies, which means we're able to get knowledge from higher and higher dimensions. And the knowledge that it gives us, the truth that it reveals to us, like this first constitution, opens our eyes. I said, oh, this is where we're supposed to be. Well, we're not quite there, are we? We're not, we still have a way to go. Okay, um, when we think, when I think back um, as to what my meditation teacher said, they said to go back to that feeling, to back, go back to what it felt like when we're holding a baby, when we're holding a cat or a dog, that feeling of love, that feeling of acceptance, that feeling of being part of everything. So... This is the kind of feeling we need to have all the time. And when we are able to talk with and deal with and work with the individuals around us in that way, in that feeling of acceptance, of love and friendship and justice and being able to do everything together, um, this is where we're going and this is how the Knowledge Book is helping us now. And as long as we have this kind of a feeling of love, acceptance, and tolerance to the individuals around us, then we are succeeded. We know that we are facing and looking at that individual from our essence, not from our ego. Okay, now, so we will no longer be needing any other kind of societal laws. We will not be needing any kind of laws about anything except maybe, you know, respect for nature and respect for everyone around us. We need to know that everything around us is basically perfect. And even right now, when we're dealing with, with the world dimension, when we're dealing and are in the world dimension and things don't go right, they're perfect opportunities for us to be able to learn and to experience and to be able to grow from them. This wouldn't be happening to us unless we needed it to make sure that we go higher on the evolution chain. Or they're happening to let us know, listen, you missed something here. You still need this to work on. So if I get angry on the phone, I said, oops, slip down. I was better yesterday. I'm not so good today. Or when someone comes at us and attacks us and we don't fight back and we don't attack back and we keep our words maybe not swallowed, but the words don't even come up to retaliate, then we're having a good day, meaning we're closer to the ideal. We're closer to where we need to be. So little by little, step by step, we get to the point where um, we are facing and dealing with individuals, um, dealing with individuals on a better level, on a higher evolution level, and are able to work as we are working. So now, again, all these rules and regulations at this point, well, when we learn anything, when we are trying to do something different than we were doing before, we need something from the outside that tells us what to do. We need something from the outside that tells us, listen, do this, do that, do the other. Just like the meditation teacher basically said, okay, um, 
have this feeling, what does emotion, what, what, what state were you in at that time? So basically, when we have those outside rules, when we have outside um, regulations and outside forces, then we fake it until we make it. So the guidelines actually put us in a position where we're able to accomplish what we're supposed to be accomplishing. Now, this is basically the end for today. Hope this addressed some of the issues that you may have had about laws and has addresses and gave some of the answers that you have about this. Um, now, humanity's verdict, of course, is in humanity's hands. The rope has been put in our hands. Now, what we do with that rope will basically dictate whether we'll hang ourselves or save ourselves. And as the knowledge book states, and Mrs. Chirac frequently reminds us, you are the ones who will save the world. So hopefully um, you will give me some topics for not this coming, but for the future shows and any questions you may have or objections you may have about any of the comments or statements that I may have made. Okay? So... Um, till next time, stay tuned and we'll see, see you later. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasek. Marge was led to the Knowledge Book, a gift to humanity, and it's time of transition to the golden age. They provided the truth and energies and frequencies. Now, she shares information from and answers questions about the Knowledge Book with you each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit Marge at usa.theknowledgebook.net. 